And it's creeping at doing something absolutely bizarre. <laughs> uh, well, this would be probably the first time I've ever actually um, played a freaking uh, mobile game on this channel. We're playing Klondike, and there's a little more going on here than just me playing a game. Let me say. So this video, I'm going to talk about a few different things. Uh, to paraphrase, I guess, uh, first off, why the heck I'm playing a modern mobile game and what led up to it, I guess, a little bit. Um, also, my thoughts on modern gaming on mobile devices in general, downloadable content, and paywalls. This is going to kind of be a reality series, I guess, for some people, because, you know, I, I'm an old school gamer. I come from the 80s and the 90s when you bought a cartridge for 45 bucks, and it was the whole game on that cartridge, and you didn't have to put any further money into it. Actually, that would have been thoroughly discouraged back in the day, because you know full and darn well some bratty kid somewhere was going to take daddy's credit card and run up the bill to Nintendo. Heck, it already happens now. It was in the news the other day. There was a kid who ran up, I don't know, like $2.3 million. I'm probably wrong on that figure and over-exaggerating it, but it was a bunch of money they spent on this stupid downloadable stuff. Now, what led me up to playing this game is I just changed cell phone providers like this month. Verizon had been screwing me quite a lot and I had spent a lot of time trying to get on the phone with them and dealing with their crappy store and dealing with the crappy people in their company and I just kind of reached a point with them where I said you know what screw it so we moved to a new provider and with it I got new phone LG Stylo 6 which actually like a lot better than <laughs> I like it a lot better than my uh, Google Pixel was just a total pain in the neck. I mean, really, it was all the worst attributes of an iPhone applied to an Android. I mean, really, I need I can't charge my phone and use BandLab at the same time. I should use this to do some videos of that. Um so anyway, the the company I moved to, and I don't want to talk about them or this thing because maybe in hopes keeping it somewhat obscure at least will keep them from but they have this crazy ad thing where, or this crazy program where you can fill out surveys, watch ads, and play mobile games to earn points. And then you can apply those points to things like Amazon gift cards or a voucher to take, you know, up to $25 off your bill. And me, being the kind of person I am, I just do this stuff sort of willy-nilly out of the blue. I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and do this and give it a shot. And I did. And I started playing a few games on it and filling out a few surveys. And it was like emo.com in the late 90s, early 2000s. So why the heck wouldn't I kind of like this at least? But okay. So it is kind of awesome that I can play games and actually earn points off of it. What is kind of sucky, though, is it's not Dragon Warrior. It's not Mario. It's not, you know... I tend to shy away from mobile versions of games, and I tend to do so for a good reason. And it's because mobile games are kind of like gambling in a casino, and I don't like gambling either. And here's why. When you first get any of these games, they just shower you with bonuses. I mean, for like the most minute, silly stuff, it's like... You just built a barn, and it took just two taps on the screen. We're going to give you 5,000 gold and 3 million rupees and a whole bunch of building materials and a whole bunch of animals and a whole bunch. It's like that first time when you step up to like a nickel slot or something and you run it and it like pays out $5 on like the first run. <laughs> it's just there to suck you in. That, that's all it's there to do. It, it's there to suck you in. 
the idea is they get your confidence and then you'll be like, hey, I invested some into this. This is pretty fun. I think I'll go ahead and invest some more into it. Let me tell you, because like, take a look here. I'm at the later stage. So the first stage is typically the attract, what, what they call the attract mode. It's like with the arcade machines being loud and obnoxious back in the early 80s. And you'd be like, oh, cool. Look at those graphics. Look at that sound. I want to play that. And then proceeds to pour $50 worth of quarters into Robotron or Miner 2049er or whatever the heck. Proceeds to basically pay his entire rent into Pac-Man. <laughs> So, you, first you have the attract mode. Then you have, then you have kind of the area where it starts to get a little bit challenging. Because you're like, you know, I can keep going with this. And it, it's all kind of designed to encourage you to do things like I'm about to show you here. Like, in-game currency in here is coins. But they have a secondary in-game currency that's like emeralds or something. <laughs> but if you're out of emeralds and you want more, like I'm at now, look at this. You have to pay actual freaking money for this shit. Who in their right mind is going to throw more money at a damn video game? I mean, you know. But what it does is it preys upon your patience. I would liken I, I liken this game kind of to being kind of like Farmville for Facebook. Uh, basically, you remember Farmville was like a game where you were like these little cherub-looking people, and you like built you like built planters' fields and put like a barn in and cows and stuff. It, it's the same idea; it's just expanded upon. I actually find this one actually fairly quite fun, but. Now that I'm a little further along and I'm supposed to hit level 12 and then I can, you know, save like $25 on my bill with all the points I've accumulated. Uh, you know, I'm at that point now where you kind of have to do a lot of sitting around and waiting. Like I got, you have this limited energy counter up here and as you can see, you have to pay rubies for energy now. And let me show you a little something about energy. So. I need to find some tasks here and f oh wait so a lot of times there's an arrow first off you can earn experience and gold just by making deliveries these random people in town just order stuff from you yes yeah, so this game kind of reminds me of a cross between freddy farkas frontier pharmacist and farmville um yeah so let's take a look i've got like a half constructed dairy that I need like boards, wood, veneer, and cement for. So let's see if I even have anything that I can make cement with. Well, I need more clay. Well, I'm gonna have to go get some more clay. So now I gotta go to town and I gotta find some clay and I know where it is. So you gotta like collect building materials. It's almost, it, it's kind of like Minecraft meets Farmville meets Freddy Farkas. I mean, <laughs> the only thing is, is I don't need a modern day book of health and hygiene. Now let's go eat up most of my energy. You see that took up like 29 of my energy to get all that clay. I'm gonna knock that out for three. And all these clouds like cover areas that you're supposed to beat up with a hammer or whatever. The only reason I had all that energy to begin with was because of the basic fact to let this thing sit and wash the car in between. So yeah, I'm at that phase where you have to start getting really patient with the darn thing, and then you let it sit for four or five days. I can see this is one of two ways. One, they're trying to encourage you to spend money, and two, they're trying to uh, weed out the people who aren't gonna spend, AKA me. Well, I don't give up that easy. They don't know that I am probably one of the most patient gamers on the planet. And some of this kind of harkens back to Dragon Quest, actually. If you ever played Dragon Quest two or the localized version was Dragon Warrior 2. There's a puzzle where you have to get this thing called the Water Flying Cloth, and you have to go to some guy in some random town in the middle of the mountains somewhere where there's no save point, and you have to go deliver like the strands of yarn or do yarn or whatever to this guy. And almost every Let's Play I've ever seen on YouTube of Dragon Quest 2, they mess it up, and they basically are like, when is he going to be done with this thing? 
when is it? Dag nabbit, I've been like playing this game six hours. What you have to do is you have to shut off the game and then turn it back on again. I mean, literally physically turn the game off and turn the Nintendo off. Like, run through the sequence. You go to a king, you save, you say, I'd like to rest right now. And then it gives you the black screen where it says, please remember to press reset, uh, reset while pressing power. Otherwise, your uh, data in the Imperial Scrolls of Honor may be lost. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing, only it requires even more patience. Which I have a lot of. Now, one of the things I did on this game to sort of make sure that I don't end up losing out is I gained the system. I mean, one of the things about this is because of the way it tries to really hold your hand. Because old games, I mean, they didn't do like this. I'll show you maybe on another game when I record it. When I first started this thing, I mean, it was like dropping hints everywhere. Dropping arrows. Go over here. Now go over here to mix this and this together to make maze or whatever. <laughs> I wasn't even paying that much attention. I was just like, eh, I'll just follow you. So, it just directs you what to do. Whereas back in the day with like Dragon Quest, which, which, which is a close enough comparison, you had to actually like read the text that's on screen. So... Otherwise, you didn't know what the heck you were doing. You, like, walk outside with no weapons, no armor, and then you get killed by a slime. <laughs> I love how the older games had a way of just smacking you upside the head and saying, Pay attention, you dolt, or you're gonna die. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like, that is like, let me hold your hand for you. Dragon Quest was made in, like, 2020 by an American developer it'd be like, okay, first you need to talk to the king. Talk to King Lorik. King Lorik only says like three things. Okay, now you need to go outside and use that 150 gold to buy weapons and armor. We suggest you buy the copper sword. But what if I want to do like I do and use the bamboo pole and heavier armor? You know? Battles take longer, but better defense and I don't lose half my gold by dying all the time it's where patience and patience and this seems kind of rambly I'm doing this without a script but yeah the whole point the whole point to this and the reason why I'm playing this is because I'm because I'm just you know trying to save on my bill I mean, the goal is play up to level 12 and then once you're up to level 12, you get your points and you move on to the next game and install it and play something else. Now that does lead me to question, is it going to burn out the flash memory in my phone doing that? Uh, I'm kind of doubtful. Anyway, let's take a look at some tasks I have. So this game is called Klondike. I initially thought it was some solitaire thing. I love solitaire. I generally play on my NEC Versa, not on this. But it ended up being this weird frontier game where you're, like, building barns and foundries and fixing a boat for a sea captain. And you're like, let's see here. We got some stone stairs on another land and I need bricks. Well, how do you make bricks? Well, you got to go make them over here at the freaking pottery. Well, I look in the pottery. If you go here to bricks... It says you need mortar, which I have one. I have plenty of fire, but I need zinc. I need quartz sand. Create from quartz in the quarry. Well, I'm not having much luck finding quartz anywhere. I can earn a few experience points lighting my fences on fire. You know, these frozen things. Let's see if this is quartz. Iron ore, iron ore, iron ore. Where's Benjamin ore? Coal. Ice. Ordinary logs. I got a few of those. Coal. 
I've only got like a little bit of that. So I have to go to some expedition location to find it. But I don't have a lot of energy. So one of the ways you build energy in this game is by feeding your furnace stuff. But of course I don't have a lot of stuff because I'm getting to that kind of point in the game where they're really trying to get you to spend money. And sorry, it just ain't happening. I'm old school. And honestly, I kind of enjoy the challenge. I actually still find it really funny. So like the app that I'm doing this through that gets me the points said, challenge is extremely hard. You call this extremely hard? Extremely hard is beating like S-Turk in Dragon Quest 4 or playing Super Mario Brothers 3 without a warp whistle. Extremely hard is trying to play Pac-Man to the point that the screen glitches or Bigfoot doing the hill climbs, you know? And speaking of Bigfoot, I like Monster Truck Destruction, but it's another one of those games that I refuse simply to play on phone because of the basic fact that you have to, the game is free, but you have to spend money to buy the rest of the game, which is just stupid. In my opinion, especially since they have a perfectly good Steam version out on PC that I like even better and I don't have to squint. And it has, you know, but let, let me put it this way. I spent about $7 out front for Monster Truck Destruction. I, I basically got myself the three trucks I really wanted in the game. Bigfoot 9, Bigfoot 5, and Bigfoot 1. And I just unlocked them. And it was great. On mobile, though, you get it free, and then you get ads between each race, and then you have, like, you want the same three trucks? Well, I was able to win unlock number nine, but number five and number one, you have to pay 99 cents for them. And to me, that's ridiculous. Whereas my old copy of Acclaim Bigfoot for the NES, you don't have to buy anything for the game, and you don't have to suffer any ads. There's just the inevitable inevitable uneasy feeling when you're trying to do the hill climb and you just burned up three engines <laughs> all right so i need i've got nails i need bricks i need more logs but i don't have any energy and for a while i was able to game this right here and actually get like berry syrup <laughs> for energy not anymore i don't have any berries I'm going to have to, like, go hunt around to find those. And I don't think there are any out here. Oh, yeah, and you got to uncover all this stuff by, like, hacking your way through. So we'll see where it goes. But in closing, this is what I'm basically going to say. Most mobile games are free to download. And they try to weed out people who... They try to weed out people who uh, are just going to keep playing the darn thing forever for free by making it take longer, which, haha, jokes on you. I'm one of the most patient people on the planet. But then I'm also uninstalling this once I hit level 12 because that's I've got my points and the whole purpose of me playing this to begin with is pretty much fulfilled. Um, but basically, they're like a casino. You walk in, they attract you in, they prey upon both your uh, impatience and on, you know, how dare I say it, stupidity to go and pay money on it. And then, you know, you're done. I just don't find it fun. I, I don't find it fun to pay money for this stuff. It's supposed to be free entertainment. It's a game. It's not a, it's not a need. It's a uh, want. It's like, hmm, you really enjoy playing this? Maybe you enjoy putting the money in. I don't think you're stupid for doing it, but I do think that the promise of it is ridiculous, especially when it comes to someone like me. That's just my thought. And I'll leave it there. I prefer old school stuff. But hey, if this is going to save me 25 bucks on my bill, if this is going to, you know, if this is going to, you know, maybe allow me to purchase a thing or two off of Amazon for free or whatever. Hey, more power to it. But we'll see where this goes. I might update this in a while. 
anyway, this is Creeping It signing out for now.